I'm Tamara Krinsky. And I'm Ari Karpel. Welcome to We Like to Watch, the review show where we take a look at the latest and hopefully greatest streaming shows in the attempt to help you figure out what you like to watch. Let's jump right in with our first series. High Maintenance is a streaming series about people in Brooklyn who we meet along the path of their pot dealer's delivery route. It streams on Vimeo and is the first of three series we'll be talking about on today's show. Oh, I'm not married, man. Well, it's not a, it's not a wedding plan. Oh, I, uh, I wear this because I think it makes me look more trustworthy. What do you mean? Well, you know, like, I'm like a stranger. I'm going into people's homes and shit. Like, this is a suggestion that maybe somebody out there trusts me, you know? That's interesting. <laughs> it sounds funny saying it out loud. No, no, it's, you've got a point. I mean, you don't feel like you're, you know, betraying people's trust. Okay, so I have to admit, mm -hmm. I find this show very habit forming. Mm hmm. Ah, okay, I couldn't resist the cheap joke. But seriously, um, this is definitely a show worth checking out. Um, it was created by Ben Sinclair and Katya Blitchfield. Ben actually stars as the pot dealer, whose name we never actually find out in the series. That's right. Um, and Katya is a casting director, Emmy Award winning casting director, who's worked on shows like 30 Rock. And you definitely see that in the quality of the actors and, and the work that is, is in the show. I think obviously it's purposeful that you never know the name of this drug dealer in part because it doesn't matter what his name is. He's the drug dealer to all of these people, <laughs> even if he hangs out with them. Um, it's about the way in which he brings us to these characters. Mm -hmm. Every episode of this show stands on its own and is like a great short film or even a masterful, masterfully written short story mm -hmm. in the way that it delves into characters and illuminate something about, not just about life in New York today or how we use cell phones as they all do to get their drugs, yes. but surprising things about people in general. Like this episode that we just saw a clip from called Rachel mm -hmm. has Dan Stevens from Downton Abbey as a straight father and husband who wears dresses. Mm -hmm. And it's handled in this really interesting and surprising manner. And that's, you know, there's something about the, that's surprising about the series as a whole is that when you hear, you know, a, it, it's a show about a pot dealer, you kind <laughs> of, at least my first thought goes to, oh great, it's another dumb stoner comedy. Right. And the reality is this is not what that is at all all. There are certainly some very, very funny episodes and very funny moments, such mm -hmm. as um, there's a point where a call comes in um, from clearly what is the dealer's most annoying most annoying customer, and it comes up as the, the assholes, assholes. <laughs> um, which is great. Um, but there are some really touching stories as well, such as the story of someone who is dealing with cancer, and that is clearly why she's uh, getting some pot delivery. So, um, it goes to some dark places, and yeah. I love that it's it sort of spans the range of life in New York. Absolutely, and, and it does so um, in a way where each story is told in just the right amount of time that it needs to tell the story, since they all range from about four to 13 minutes or so. Right. So speaking of illicit professions, this brings us to our next series, Blue, which is from Wigs. It stars Julia Stiles as a single mom who supplements her office day job with a little prostitution on the side. She tries to keep this a secret from everyone in her life, including her adolescent son, Josh. Let's take a look. I'm sorry, I thought that I turned that off. I'm such a... Bad girl, I'll make it up to you. Well, with a discount? No. In kind. Quality. I just have to make this call. <laughs> I'll give you the discount, 20%. What, 50? Oh, come on. What? Okay, then come on out here. Come on. Okay, 33%. got to be a multiple of pi, otherwise the continuum would... Mm -hmm. Yeah, a derivative. It's called a derivative. No, no, that, that's right. That's right. Okay, I'll call you back in an hour. OK, 
Okay, so here's the thing. Mm. Blue is from Wigs, which is a channel and, and company that was founded by John Avnet and Rodrigo Garcia. And the whole idea was to create shows that are of interest to women. Um, I was a bit taken aback that one of their first most heavily promoted shows was about a prostitute. I think that's a legitimate concern. I mean, it, it seems almost like lifetime television for women that mm -hmm. was for years made just movies about women in distress. Um, this seems to be aiming at doing something more high-minded mm -hmm. and more interesting. And in fact, Rodrigo Garcia and John Avnet both have great yeah. track records of really interesting work. Um, so I did kind of give them the benefit of the doubt. I agree with you. It's a little bit strange that it's a prostitute. The thing that bothered me was mm -hmm. that um, it's very pulpy, kind of like a soap opera, and has this kind of dark, melodramatic mm -hmm. feeling to it instead of just being a real show. Oh, see, I don't, I don't mind that aspect. Right. I actually enjoy that aspect. So, well, maybe that's because you're a woman. Maybe So it it's is. aimed at you. Women <laughs> like soap operas, apparently. Stereotypes, they, I stereotypes. Know, I know, you're, when you feed into it. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I, once I kind of got past that, I mm -hmm. saw that Julia Stiles was giving a really good performance. Yes. And it, it gets deeper and more interesting as it moves along, and, and I enjoyed that. I would agree, and I think because of her performance and some of the supporting players like Sarah Paulson mm. and, and some really strong, what ultimately is strong writing, mm. what became very interesting to me the more I watched is that her night job really becomes a catalyst for all kinds of interesting conversations that I do think are very important to women. Conversations about um, the disparity between the pay that men and women receive for doing the same job. Conversations about um, having a sense of control over one's life and how for a woman sexuality plays into that in some very interesting ways. Um, and conversations about um, how sometimes you have to use the resources that you have at your disposal to get the things you need in your life, especially to take care of your family. And that is certainly something that is applicable to most of the women. I know we are all having conversations about that. And that's deeper than we had seen mm -hmm. streaming series go for a while. Mm -hmm. Blue started streaming in 2012, and that was a time when a lot of new series came online. But streaming series didn't just come out of the blue a few years ago. They've been going on, arguably, for more than the past 10 years. So here on We Like to Watch, we're building our ultimate playlist. We are inducting to today um, the Guild, for its contribution to the streaming space. In this case, the Guild is the brainchild of Felicia Day, who plays an online gamer whose life gets turned upside down because her fellow gamers invade in real life. We're looking for Vork taking Blades, right? Mm, Blades isn't coming. Vork didn't want to invite him. Something about firewalling our priorities. Hey guys, wait up! Zabu! It's a Guild meeting. Everyone should be here. Alright, let's get this party going. Welcome to Cheesy Biz. Are you ready to be seated? Yeah, we're just meeting people. So, what do Tink and Vork look like? Right. Good point. Don't talk to me. I haven't decided if I'm joining you yet. Tink? Hi, I'm Cody. Seriously. Don't talk to me. Okie dokie. So, where's Vork? Um, what does he do? Oh, he's a fighter, but he, you know, skills are metal. In real life, Zabu. Well, I don't know, I didn't have time to research him, okay? So, back off, lady. Sorry. Uh, it's our first fight. Maybe we'll have uh, makeup sex later, or... No. Not. What about that guy over there? Uh, uh the bald guy? Yeah. Hmm, I never pictured Vork being bald. He's so confident on the mic. You can't be bald and confident? Um, your scalp is out all the time. So as you can see, the show's a little bit clunky, kind of corny, but there's, that's part of its charm, I think. Mm -hmm. There are very broad strokes. These characters are all ethnic stereotypes. <laughs> it's all juvenile humor about boobs and poop. But <laughs> I, I enjoyed that. I mean, it, it's sort of this funny throwback in a way mm -hmm. that's very self-conscious. Absolutely, it's, it's sort of about this band of misfits that come together, which we see you know, in large projects like the Avengers. Joss Whedon and Felicia Day have a history of working together, actually. Mm -hmm. um, but everyone in this case is in on 
on the joke, mm. which allows us as the audience to laugh along with them and actually become attached and involved with these characters, which is part of the reason that I think it transcends the gamer genre, which is which was its original intended audience, mm -hmm. and is really fun for somebody like me, who's not a gamer, to watch. But the other thing I think that's really significant about the show, and the other reason for including it on the Ultimate Playlist, is because of the new space, the new ground that it broke in the business of, of the streaming space. Um, you know, she, Felicia, uh, produced this independently. Um, the first season was self-financed by her and her partners, and then um, with additional funds that were contributed by people who became fans of the show. Which is way before Kickstarter. Yeah, hello PayPal. Um, and then uh, the series, uh, seasons two through five were actually licensed out to Microsoft, who um, had an exclusive window for it on Xbox Live and the Zoom Marketplace and a couple of others. And um, actually season six, she pulled back and uh, put it back on her YouTube channel as she was launching Geek and Sundry, which was part of the of YouTube's 100 Channels initiative, where they put money behind um, some, some shows that they wanted to get done. Um, and this whole time she retained ownership of the show, which is a goal for any creator. Yeah, I mean, in many ways, she was one of the first people to really figure mm -hmm. out how to be able to sustain your a project like this mm -hmm. online. Um, and part of that was they sell DVDs of it. You could still buy it on DVD. Or you can go back to her website and mm -hmm. watch it for free, kind of strung together as one long piece. And along the way, there are sort of pop-up video style infographics that tell you little trivia about things that were happening at the time. And one of the things they do is make fun of themselves. Mm -hmm. And that back in 2007, when they were making this, there was faxing was nor a normal thing to do in a scene. You would never see that today. Here on We Like to Watch, we also like to talk about how to watch, which brings us to our latest segment, New Ways to Watch. You know, between your phone, your tablet, and your connected TV, sometimes figuring out how to access your favorite new streaming series can be a bit of a mystery. So we're here to clear things up as we take a look at the latest technology and remind you about some older methods that you may already have available to you on your TV or computer. This episode, we want to spotlight the Xfinity TV on Comcast X1 Entertainment Operating System, which recently took home an Emmy. The award was given specifically for user experience and visual design. In other words, the way it looks and how easy it is for viewers to use. Highlights of the X1 platform include a powerful search engine and the ability for subscribers to find and watch content seamlessly across multiple devices. So you can start watching on your smartphone while you're in line at the grocery store, pause it, and continue when you get to your living room and watch it on the big screen. You just might want to put your groceries away first. It's one of the cleanest, most intuitive interfaces that I've seen so far, so if you're a Comcast customer, it might be something you want to check out. So does this mean that Convergence is finally here? I feel like we've been hearing about that for decades now. Convergence is coming, Convergence is coming. I think Convergence is here, but it still has a lot of wires attached to it. Hmm. That seamless experience is something we're still pursuing. And I think early adopters have found it, um, but I don't think it's easily, um, I'm not gonna say accessible, I don't think it's easily utilized by the everyday viewer. It's not ready for me yet. I wanna be able to press a button <laughs> and it's all happening. Go send That's a fax and see you. if you can get a user's exactly. manual. Exactly, <laughs> thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> On today's show, we've reviewed two series, High Maintenance and Blue. So Tamara, what do you think, High Maintenance Pass or play? Definitely play. This is a very habit-forming series. Sorry. Mm. <laughs> and, and it's something I'm looking forward to seeing more episodes of. So definitely play. How about you? I agree. I mean, undoubtedly, I think High Maintenance is worth playing and perhaps for me playing again. Mm. Well, do you feel the same way about Blue? Um, I give a qualified play to Blue. I think it's mm -hmm. interesting. It's not my favorite thing, but good performances and, and worth checking out. Yeah, I would agree. It's, it's definitely worth checking out, because, especially because of Julia Stiles' performance, as well as some of the supporting characters, like Sarah Paulson, who's a wonderful actress. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I would, I would definitely give it a, a qualified play. Tune in next time when we review Amazon's Transparent. Thank you so much for tuning in to We Like to Watch. And if there's something that you think we should be watching, let us know in the comments. We'll see you next time.